naturalization service agents who are still required to provide security and who simply are not on the job. Well, some people trapped in the World Trade Center towers on September 11th faced a horrific choice between death by fire and death by jumping. Companies are now rushing to sell people who work in high-rise offices parachutes. Steve Young has the story. No one who watched will ever forget the horror of seeing dozens or more people jump from the World Trade Center catastrophe. Which is why a Michigan company is racing to ship an $800 last-ditch skyscraper parachute. The chute opens much faster than sports parachutes. It's more stable but can't be steered, which means you could slam into the skyscraper you just fled or another nearby. This line's attached to the building or the, wherever you're dropping from. And the design work started before September 11th with modification of a chute used by aerobatic pilots. But it wasn't clear if there was a big enough market. Destiny Aircraft and Executive Chutes. Orders are now pouring in and other companies are racing to catch up to Executive Chute whose product and training video became available this week. This is an option of last resort. Uh, it, it's kind of like putting on a life preserver if you're on a, uh, a cruise ship. It's something you hope you never have to use. Executive Chute was first urged to develop its device by lawyer John Larkin. His company insures high-rise buildings. He works in a Chicago skyscraper. I will keep it on the back of my door and, you know, God forbid, I, I hope I never have to use it. And I don't think I will. Is it sensible or reckless? One member of the Parachute Industry Association says diving out of a skyscraper is at least as risky as the dangerous sport of so-called base jumping from the top of buildings, bridges, and cliffs. But the association's president says, would I give shoots to my mom and dad if they were in a burning skyscraper with no other escape? You bet. Lou? Steve, thank you very much. Steve Young.